my last few videos, some of you have commented or noticed that I haven't been using the Fujifilm GFX 100S, and it's for a very simple reason. The front dial keeps breaking on me. This is the second time that it's happened. I'm not sure if it's an ongoing issue with the model that I have, or if it's for GFX 100Ss in particular, I'm not sure. If any of you have the same problem, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below. Now then, I absolutely love using this camera. Uh, the quality of the images, uh, the size of the camera for a medium format camera is just, it's just a, a really great camera to, to handle. Now, I also happen to have a GFX 100, which is the first camera that I bought of this line of cameras. And I keep meaning to sell it, but I actually really enjoy using this camera. Uh, but obviously it's quite a bit heavier than the GFX 100S. The thing that I really love about this camera is this articulating viewfinder at the top here. Uh, the one annoyance about this camera is that it uses different batteries to the 100S and their other cameras. They're all compatible with this camera, they're not. So that can be a bit of a problem as well. You have to carry extra batteries. So I'm very lucky to have a couple of GFX 100s. But great cameras do not equate into great photography. And some of you are probably sitting there right now going, oh yeah, right, well, it's easy for you to say because you have a medium format camera. Well, that's true, I do. And we'll get to the reasons why at the end of the video. But in the meantime, I'd like to argue that you could take great photographs with any camera. It doesn't matter what camera you have, you can take great quality images, especially if you use good technique and you're shooting in great light or good light for that subject. And just careful with the way you take photographs. So what I'd like to do today is prove that. Now today we're just gonna go with quality rather than artistic merit because I'm in my garden here. There are some subjects to photograph where we're a bit limited, but what I'd like to do is take some photographs with the GFX 100S, but then I'm gonna compare them with a new camera that I just purchased and that is the Nikon D700. Now this is a great camera, but it did come out in 2007, I think, or 2008. It is full frame, but it's only 12 megapixels. So right off the bat, I can tell you that when it comes to the quality of the images, the quality from this camera is going to be far superior to this camera. But what I'd like to argue is that the majority of your photographs either don't see the light of day or they're only this size on your phone or computer. Perhaps you blow them up as a print. Uh, most of my prints are 11 by 14. Occasionally I'll blow up a really big print. That's where you might notice the quality. But when it comes to artistic merit and all that other stuff, I can take just as great images with this camera as I can with this camera. So that's what we're gonna to prove today. We're just gonna look at the quality of the images and what I can get away with and what I can't get away with. So without further delay, let's walk around the garden, see what we can find, and then we'll do a quick comparison. Okay, this is a little awkward. I, uh, I tried to find stuff in my own garden, but I uh, wasn't having much luck. There's not an awful lot flowering right now. So I've come next door to my parents' garden and they have a bit more going on. Um, so I found this rose here and I'm going to start off with the, the Nikon. I've got a 70 to 200 millimeter on, on the F4. It's a pretty good lens and uh, I'm just concentrating on two of the roses down here. Now then, uh, it is quite bright. The, the clouds are moving a little bit, but it's still a little bit bright. So since my last video uh, remember I, I was going to use a reflector and I, I the uh, the reflector that I had or the coating had come off so I've, I've bought another one I just got this off Amazon for like 50 bucks and uh, this is a, a three in one so it has a diffuser and then it also has um, a couple of reflective coatings like there's a, a silver and then I think there's also a gold in here I guess in retrospect, really, you need two of these because you need one to diffuse the light and one to reflect light back into your subject. 
the problem I found with these, and I've, I had the same problem with the last one, um, it's really hard to prop them up. You need something to, to hold them. Um, so I have my umbrella and uh, I might be able to uh, clamp my umbrella onto a, another tripod and then reflect light back into uh, the roses here. So uh, why don't I just set that up and uh, I'll show you the results and then we'll take another image with the GFX 100S, try and get the same composition and we'll have a, a quick comparison of the two. Well, my, uh, my mum's roses are looking pretty good right now. There's a lot of great uh, photo ops here. A lot of people don't know this about me, but uh, several years ago, I used to come out with a, an annual calendar through a company called Wyman and Son um, on roses. I had several calendars throughout British Columbia and uh, roses was one of them. So I actually quite enjoy photographing roses. I just haven't done it for quite a long time. Um, what I'm doing right now is there's these roses, the old English roses, they tend to droop and look down because uh, the stems are quite weak. So what I'm going to do on these, because they're, they're facing down, they're not getting an awful lot of light. Now, of course, I can open that up in, uh, in Lightroom, but I think what I'm going to do is just grab my uh, reflector and try and reflect a little bit of light back into these just so it opens up the shadows a bit. So I'll do that with both the uh, the Nikon camera and the uh, and the Fujifilm camera. Okay, I'm going to make a really quick shot here. I'm just going to photograph these leaves on the uh, on the fence here. And the reason why I picked these is because there's a lot of shine on them. So I just want to see how the the cameras handle the uh, the contrast or the dynamic range. Of course, we're in bright sunshine right now, but of course, when I use the uh, the polarizer, it gets rid of a, a lot of that uh, that sheen on the leaves. And uh, I've even placed myself 90 degrees from the sun so we get that maximum effect. Just want to compare the two and, and see how they compare in detail, contrast, dynamic range and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now viewing images in a video on a monitor or on your TV screen doesn't really show the nuances of each image, but that's kind of the point of this video. Most of the time when we're viewing images, unless they happen to be prints, uh, you're really not going to notice the difference unless you look at them really closely on your own monitor. So that's what we're going to do here, but even still, uh, you're still going to have a hard time seeing the difference. Uh, now I've tried to color correct these the best I can so that the, the colors match. Uh, you will notice straight off the bat the image on the 
on the right has a bit more depth and that's the Nikon image, that's a F9. The one on the uh, left is F11. And I tried to shoot them roughly at the same focal length. Uh, the, the Nikon image is at, uh, I'm trying to remember here, it's at 130 uh, millimeters and the uh, GFX was at um, 156, which equivalent of a 35 is 123. Now then, it's really hard to see the difference when they're at, uh, you know, when they fit when they fit the screen. Where you really notice a difference is when you zoom in to a hundred percent. There's a hundred percent. So, as you can see, there's we're looking a lot more detail in the uh, in the in the middle of the flower, and this is a hundred percent on the right side. If we go to three hundred percent you'll notice that the Nikon, even though it's only 12 megapixels, it holds up really, really well. And I would argue that, you know, if you put this through one of the, the new programs where you can actually uh, up-res an image uh, and in Photoshop or there's other programs that will do that, you could probably get pretty close to looking like the GFX. So I'm really quite actually surprised uh, at the quality of the 12 megapixel and if you printed these which we will do in another video I think you'd be pretty hard to tell the difference so let's have a look at the next images here uh, here are the two uh, images of the second rose that I took a picture of and again they're very very close now the colors are a little bit different here uh, I think the one on the, the right, I used uh, the gold reflector. The one on the left, I used a white reflector. But again, you know, if we zoom in to 100%, you can see that the quality of each file holds up really well. The only difference is, is that with the GFX or medium format, the depth of field isn't quite as uh, as pronounced. Because it's a larger format, it's just harder to get that depth that you need. This was shot at f9 for the uh, the GFX, and the uh, the Nikon was also shot at f9. Uh, as far as focal length goes, the uh, the Nikon camera is at 130, and the GFX was at. 79 or it was 100 millimeters but it's an equivalent of 79 on a 35 millimeter right and then lastly we'll just zoom in on the two images of the the leaves the one on the right is uh, the gfx and in this image i did notice some uh some differences in sharpness. Now that could have been due to some camera movement perhaps, but the one on the uh, on the right does look much sharper. The other thing that I really noticed is that even though we have specular highlights, uh, the, the specular highlights in the GFX file are not blown out at all. The specular highlights in the uh, Nikon camera, which is on the left here, they are blown out. Now, I probably could have underexposed slightly and that might have helped, but uh, this is where medium format really starts to shine is when you have contrasty conditions. And I've, I've shown videos in the past where uh, an image will be way underexposed with a GFX, five or six stops underexposed. You bring those shadows up and there's absolutely no noise in there whatsoever. Now, I haven't shot anything with the Nikon at higher ISOs, but I suspect that the noise will be quite noticeable. But again, we have a lot of new programs coming out where you can get rid of that noise. So it'll be interesting to see how well it does with some of those programs. Okay, so by now you're probably thinking, well, this is all great, Adam, but what's the point in this useless exercise? The point is, is just to show you that you don't need an exceptional camera to take exceptional photographs. You can use anything from a cell phone to an old point and shoot film camera 
to the high-end digital cameras, it doesn't really matter. Great photography comes from you, not your camera. Now, yes, there are features on cameras that make life a little bit easier. And, you know, a camera like this with the high megapixels, the quality is exceptional, but that's as far as it goes. I say this to a lot of people, great photography doesn't come from watching YouTube videos like this one. It comes from getting out there and making images. That's how you get better at photography, not by buying new equipment. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's all great and fine for you, Adam. You just happen to own two GFX uh, cameras. Well, that's true, I do. And the reason why I own these cameras is because I really like the camera. I really enjoy using it. I enjoy the quality from this camera. Do I need 100 megapixels? Absolutely not. But the point is, is that the, the enjoyment of using the equipment that you have is for me is a part of the experience of photography that's why i shot 4x5 for so many years is that i really enjoyed the process of setting up the camera and using that camera to make images as another example sony cameras are exceptional but i don't like using them i have a sony camera actually the the camera i'm using right now is a sony camera it's a great camera but i just don't enjoy using that camera and you can kind of equate it to things like, okay, so why would someone buy a really nice car when, when you can just buy a cheap one and it does the same job? It's the same thing. You go out to buy, you buy a vehicle either because you just want to get to A to B, that's why I have the van that I have and I like to camp in it, or you can go out and spend a hundred grand, which basically does the same thing. It might have more bells and whistles and be more luxurious, but it's the same thing as buying a camera. So if you are in the market or just starting out photography, don't worry about the equipment. Get yourself a decent camera, something like this, $400, 12 megapixels, or you can go up to the D750, which is even better. And you can use that and spend your money on good glass. So that's kind of my tips today. I, I hope they help. Uh, I will continue to use this camera and I'll keep showing you examples as the videos go on landscapes and so on. It'll be interesting to see how it performs next to other cameras that I have. All right, folks, thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you got a few ideas from it. And hopefully I'll have a video from California next week. If it's not next week, then it'll be the week after. All right, thanks ever so much. And until next time, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.